The dawn was breaking over France, casting an ethereal glow on the grandeur of Napoleon Bonaparte's imperial residence, the Tilleries Palace. With its majestic splendor under the soft hues of the morning sun, the palace was a sight to behold. Inside the palace, nestled amidst lavishly decorated chambers, Napoleon was already up. Dressed in his iconic military uniform, he looked every bit the emperor he was, powerful, decisive, and a touch overconfident. His chamber was a testament to his strategic acumen, strewn with maps, battle plans, and various documents. While the entire country was just starting to stir awake, Napoleon had been hard at work. The sun's first rays found him hunched over his large mahogany desk, pen in hand, a thoughtful frown on his face as he went through state affairs. His secretary, Pierre, was by his side, nervously adjusting his spectacles while making futile attempts to keep up with Napoleon's brisk pace. Read the proclamation, Pierre. Napoleon ordered, not looking up from his papers. He had a tendency to make grand statements out of the blue, which Pierre had long since learned to accept without question. Pierre gulped and took a deep breath before reading aloud. Vive la France! As soon as the words left Pierre's mouth, an odd, clucking noise resonated from Napoleon's direction. Napoleon froze. His eyes widened. He glanced under the desk, only to find an egg, perfectly formed and warm, right at his feet. The sight was so absurd that he couldn't help but let out a guffaw, while Pierre watched, eyes wider than saucers. A chicken egg. How did it get here? Pierre sputtered. Napoleon, always a man of action, shrugged off the odd occurrence. Perhaps, he thought, it was simply a prank by one of his guards. Little did he know, the hilarity of the situation was just beginning to unfold. Meanwhile, outside the palace, the city of Paris was coming alive. The cobblestone streets, bathed in the warm glow of sunrise, echoed with the noises of horse-drawn carriages and busy merchants setting up their stalls. Amidst this bustling cityscape, one figure stood out an old, haggard woman. She was peculiar, to say the least. Dressed in tattered robes, she hobbled along with the help of a crooked staff. Her eyes, clouded with age yet sparkling with a curious intensity, scanned the grand façade of the Tilleries Palace. A mischievous smirk played upon her thin lips as she muttered some arcane words, her voice barely more than a whisper. Back in the palace, Napoleon was addressing his generals. His impassioned speech, full of conviction and patriotism, echoed in the Grand Hall. The generals listened attentively, their eyes on the small yet dynamic figure before them. I declare, we shall provide, for we are the son of this great nation. Napoleon announced, raising his hand in a dramatic flourish. He finished his declaration with a thundering. Vive la France! The clucking noise echoed in the hall once again followed by the thump of an egg falling from underneath Napoleon's coat. A stunned silence followed, as the men in the room gaped at the spectacle. A blushing Napoleon, utterly flabbergasted, stared down at another egg lying at his feet. The room exploded with laughter. The generals, though perplexed, were unable to contain their amusement. Napoleon, although irritated, let out a chuckle himself. Pierre, who had turned a brighter shade of red than a beet, hastily picked up the egg, muttering a quick apology. Still, the absurdity of the situation hadn't entirely dawned on them. Neither Napoleon nor Pierre could fathom what was about to transpire, transforming this ordinary day into one of the most ludicrous episodes in the annals of the French Empire. The laughter in the Grand Hall hadn't subsided when the palace doors creaked open, allowing the old woman entrance. She was a stark contrast against the richly adorned interior and the splendidly dressed nobles. Despite her ragged appearance, she carried a certain dignity, drawing curious glances from the court. Ignoring the ongoing revelry, the woman shuffled directly towards Napoleon. She stared at him, her eyes gleaming with an eerie intensity. 
Napoleon, accustomed to meeting eyes with his enemies, met her gaze undeterred. My Emperor. She croaked, her voice brittle yet commanding attention. I've come to deliver a message. Still bemused by the egg fiasco, Napoleon indulged her. Speak, madame. He said. The rooster crowd. Was her unexpected response. There was a stifled laughter around the hall, but a cold shiver ran down Napoleon's spine. The woman's eyes were transfixed on the egg in Pierre's hand, and then she added, Vive la France! Another egg dropped from Napoleon to the marble floor, resulting in an uproarious laughter around the hall. But Napoleon wasn't laughing anymore. The woman, her mission accomplished, turned and hobbled out of the palace, leaving behind a trail of perplexed faces and a very embarrassed emperor. Napoleon was no stranger to challenges, but this was an anomaly he had never anticipated. Despite the absurdity, the pressing question was, how was he, the Emperor of France, laying eggs? As the laughter around him subsided, Napoleon's mind whirred into action. It was clear that the old woman had bewitched him. Every action is a nequalindo pussy action. He mused, drawing from his knowledge of physics. There must be a way to undo the spell. And thus, Napoleon, the emperor famed for his military conquests, was about to embark on a different kind of quest. A quest that would take him beyond the battlefields and into the realm of the absurd. The next day, Napoleon, despite the constant ridicule and the threat of random egg-laying, resolved to break the spell. He gathered his most trusted advisors, including Pierre, and devised a plan. He would journey to the old crone's dwelling. The plan, simple yet daring, was to demand that she remove the spell. His troops, always ready for a battle, were now preparing for this unusual mission. Little did they know, they were about to embark on one of the most comical adventures in their careers. Before leaving, Napoleon stood before his mirror, adorned in his military attire. He glanced at his reflection, a mixture of determination and bemusement etched on his face. Who would have thought Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of France, would be laying eggs like a chicken? He chuckled to himself. The journey was set to commence the next morning. As the city of Paris was still sleeping, Napoleon and his entourage set off under the cloak of darkness. They traversed through quiet streets, past the city limits, and ventured into the countryside. As the sun rose, they reached a seemingly abandoned cottage, nestled at the edge of a dark forest. It was just as the woman had described eerie, mysterious, and reeking of magic. They watched from a distance as the old woman hobbled out, her staff in one hand and a bucket in the other. It was time for their mission to begin. Before they could approach, Napoleon, his heart filled with patriotic fervor, declared, for the honor of France, we shall succeed. But before he could finish with his customary, Vive la France, Pierre clamped a hand over Napoleon's mouth. The last thing they needed was an egg in the middle of their covert operation. Napoleon gave him a sheepish grin. Clearly, this adventure was going to be more challenging and more hilarious than any of his previous campaigns. Unbeknownst to him, the old crone had already noticed her visitors and was watching them with an amused glint in her eyes. With a mischievous gleam in her eyes, the old crone watched Napoleon and his men from the corner of her eye, pretending to be engrossed in her morning chores. Meanwhile, Napoleon, Pierre, and a handful of their most trusted men began to strategize. They huddled together, whispering, glancing furtively at the woman and the decrepit cottage. The scene would have been perfect for a military ambush, if not for the absurdity of it all. From time to time, Napoleon would open his mouth to rally his men with a hearty, Vive la France, only to be silenced by Pierre's frantic shushing. 
Finally, they agreed on a plan of action. Napoleon, with all his imperial bravado, would confront the woman, while Pierre and the others would stand ready to intervene if things turned awry. The soldiers, though unsure of how they could defend their emperor from an egg-laying curse, nodded solemnly. Taking a deep breath, Napoleon strode forward. His uniform seemed a stark contrast against the rustic backdrop of the countryside. The old woman, her lips curling into a sly grin, turned to face him. Madame. Napoleon started, his voice resonating with authority. You have cast a spell on me. I demand that you remove it. His declaration was met with cackling laughter from the old woman. She leaned on her staff, her body shaking with mirth. Oh, Emperor, I didn't curse you. I merely granted you the ability to appreciate the phrase vive la France in a different way. She replied. This response flabbergasted Napoleon. It was too absurd, too outrageous. Yet, the woman's words rang true. He did say, vive la France, quite often, and each proclamation was now a vivid experience quite literally. His bewilderment, however, was just the beginning. The old crone had more surprises up her sleeve. The woman's laughter still hung in the air as she hobbled back into her cottage, leaving a stunned Napoleon in her wake. After a few moments, he regained his composure and followed her inside, Pierre and the soldiers trailing behind. The cottage was as unusual as its occupant filled with curious trinkets, dried herbs hanging from the ceiling, and the pungent scent of magic. The woman gestured for them to sit. Even in the absurdity of the situation, Napoleon noted the uncharacteristic hospitality. Apology for the inconvenience, my emperor. She started, her tone oozing sarcasm. The spell can indeed be broken, but you must accomplish a task for me. Napoleon, intrigued yet wary, nodded for her to continue. The woman proceeded to explain the task a ridiculous mission involving a chicken, a feather from a rooster's tail, and a fresh egg laid at dawn. The emperor and his men exchanged baffled glances. The mission was laughably absurd, but what choice did they have? And so, with the rooster's crow echoing in the distance, they set off on the most comical chicken chase in the history of France. Meanwhile, back in the Tilleries Palace, news of the Emperor's adventure spread like wildfire, providing amusement to the court and townsfolk alike. From the grand halls of the palace to the bustling taverns, tales of Napoleon's chicken egg curse were shared with roars of laughter. The Emperor of France, once feared for his strategic brilliance and military prowess, had become the hero of an absurdly hilarious folk tale. As Napoleon chased around chickens, dodging feathers, and guarding eggs, he couldn't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of his predicament. This was not a battlefield. There were no enemies to conquer, no nations to rule just him, a few chickens, and a bag full of freshly laid eggs. This quest, ludicrous as it was, was turning out to be one of his most memorable adventures. Over the next few days, Napoleon and his men were immersed in their peculiar mission. They braved the squawks and pecks of territorial hens, chased elusive roosters for a single feather, and woke at the crack of dawn to collect fresh eggs. Every failed attempt, every comical mishap, and every triumphant success was accompanied by hearty laughter. This was far from the grim realities of war, it was an adventure that brought joy amidst absurdity. Napoleon, once the imperious ruler, now found himself knee-deep in feathers, arguing with Pierre over the best technique to coax a chicken. Their debates, intense as any war council, resulted in hilarious strategies involving grain trails, elaborate chicken decoys, and even an attempt at chicken diplomacy. The townsfolk watched with amusement as the emperor and his men embarked on their chicken conquest. They cheered them on, offered tips, and often joined in the laughter. The emperor's predicament became a spectacle, and to Napoleon's surprise, he found himself enjoying it. 
The absurdity of his quest had a surprising effect on Napoleon. He started seeing the hilarity in his previous pompous declarations. He chuckled at his own obsession with saying, Vive la France, at every opportunity. This strange adventure was giving him a new perspective, one that came with the ability to laugh at himself. On the seventh day, after much effort and laughter, they finally succeeded. A rooster's tail feather in one hand and a freshly laid dawn egg in the other, Napoleon couldn't help but shout. Vive la France! Despite Pierre's horrified gasp, no egg fell from Napoleon. They hooped in joy, the absurdity of their celebration echoing in the quiet countryside. But their task wasn't complete yet. They had to present their findings to the old woman. Napoleon, still grinning at his accomplishment, led his men back to the mysterious cottage, unaware of the final twist that awaited him. The sun was beginning to set as Napoleon and his men reached the old woman's cottage. Their triumphant return was met with a knowing smile from the crone. She took the rooster's feather and the fresh egg, her eyes gleaming with mischief. Well done, my emperor. She said, her voice laced with amusement. You've completed your task, and it seems you've learned to appreciate Vive la France without the need for an extra reminder. Laughter bubbled up within Napoleon. He hadn't just broken the curse. He discovered a new side of himself, one that could laugh at the absurdity of life and appreciate the joy in ridiculous adventures. Thank you, madame. He replied, chuckling at her pun. You have made this a truly exceptional experience. The old woman joined his laughter, and the cottage echoed with the sound of their shared mirth. With the exchange of a few more egg puns and good-natured banter, Napoleon bid the old woman farewell. The journey back to Paris was filled with raucous laughter and countless retellings of their ridiculous adventure. Upon his return, Napoleon found that his curse had not only made him the talk of the town, but also a much more approachable figure. His subjects now saw him not only as a formidable emperor, but also as a man capable of laughter and absurd antics. And so, the tale of Napoleon's egg-laying curse and his hilarious quest became a beloved anecdote in the annals of the French Empire. It was a reminder to all, even to Napoleon himself, of the importance of laughter, the joy of absurdity, and the endearing charm of a patriotic phrase turned hilariously awry. And every time someone would shout, Vive la France! It was often followed by the clucking of a chicken and peals of laughter. After all, who could forget the time their emperor went on a quest because he started laying eggs every time he uttered those words? <laughs>